we'll do it this way. All right, hello. Um, we are gonna go ahead and get started with our week three here. So just give me one second to pop this up. And as always, feel free to use the chat um, so that you can participate along. Um, if you're watching this later, feel free to comment and we can always respond to you that way as well. Um, a couple of things that I just wanted to say about tonight. The topic is team building, but you do not have to be interested in team building in order to um, participate in tonight. So a lot of it is also looking back at what we've already done um, and kind of going from there. So um, we have Leanne on tonight. Hi, Leanne. Um, but just checking in if anyone had the opportunity to host coach in the last two weeks. Um, kind of where and how have we added seeds into our VIP pages, our host coaching and our parties. Um, and then any host coaching conversations or questions that came up. So if you have any questions or conversations that came up that you want to revisit, feel free to um, ask those. Um, and then of course, uh, thinking ahead to this week and something that we asked you to start doing is to keep a potential teammate list. So if you don't already have one of those going, it's a good idea to get one going. Would love to know where are you keeping it? How do you choose who to add to that? Um, and if you don't have one, why do you not have one? So um, kind of having a designated place. I know that for myself, I kind of reorganize into a new notebook, um, getting this year going. That's kind of just how I keep organized with all the things. So parties and prizes and um, incentives and bookings and um, all different things like that. And then I have a different section for like meeting notes, um, you name it. So this could go um, in there in its own little team building piece. Uh, I do have one kind of unique scenario that I am in the midst of now in terms of um, a potential teammate. Um, but it's not from host coaching, so it doesn't really connect totally. Um, so if you have anything to add or share there, please feel free to do so. And even if you're commenting later, okay? All right. <clears throat> so this one is going to be kind of interactive. Again, you can use the chat, use the comment box, however you want to participate. So in thinking about team building, the first thing that we would like you to do is to write down five ways that joining Norwax has impacted your life. Okay, so what are five ways joining Norwax has impacted your life, whether you have five or one or however many. And I'm also going to write some in the chat here. Okay, so um, I said as well financially, obviously. Um, socially, I have found the community to be such a positive impact on my life and just the people that I've met along the way, the relationships I've built, um, confidence, so just kind of like my own mental health um, and self-esteem and the ability to like build a confidence in myself or something that's my own. Um, health, of course, the safety and all the good benefits that come along with using Norwex in my home for myself and my family. Uh, Leanne says, meeting a lot of great people. I agree. So most of you know by now at this point in this training, um, you know, that's how Jonna and I met. And um, it wasn't until we went to a national conference that we were able to meet and connect. Um, and that's three years in. So that's what I love is that like, it's also this growing network of people, um, whether I'm meeting them as customers or just people who are interested in having a conversation about 
cleaner and safer and better ways to live or teammates or leaders or, um, you know, even at the corporate level, I just feel like there's so many great people in this business. Um, <clears throat> and then what are common reasons why someone might join? So it could be why you joined, why someone else might join. What are the most common reasons? So I think two that I hear the most are for the discount <laughs> um, or to make money. But are there any other common reasons why someone might join? And I don't know if this goes along with discount, but I know that a lot of times it could be that someone is already buying it and like spending so much anyway. So they figure I might as well get like the perks of being... Um, a consultant kind of having their own account, but I guess that kind of goes along with the discount aspect. Um, I know sometimes people also join to just kind of have another purpose, right? Or have their own kind of um, hobby. A lot of stay-at-home moms, for example, um, which is a full-time job in itself, may do this just so that they have something else that they can, you know, focus time and attention on. And what are common abstentions someone might have to join? So why do we, um, whether it is that we assume they're an abstention or we actually get them, what are the common reasons for a no when it asking someone to join? And I think the one we can all relate to, time, right? Like I don't have time, um, whether it's I don't have time to learn it, I don't have time to commit to it, I don't have time to do what they think they need to do to run this business. Yes, too busy, absolutely. But there's never not going to be a time where we feel busy in our lives, Um I know that <clears throat> my mom is retired and, you know, she still is busy. I tell her all the time she has like more of a full social calendar than I do. And um, <clears throat> it's all about finding ways to keep your day busy. But there's always going to be something that you have to do and something that's occupying your time. And so it's also about what are you choosing to fill your time with, right? So I do think that is one of the biggest abstentions. And so the, what we want to do when we get to an abstention is to think about how can we then um, start asking questions about those abstentions. So if they said, like, for example, um, I wouldn't know what I was doing. I, I don't have a clue how to sell. I don't have a clue how to use social media. Um, asking questions, right? So why or what do you know or why do you think that you are unable to do that starts to get people thinking about their own roadblocks that have made that abstention. So if they're too busy, um, well, what is important to you about this? Or why um, or how much time do you think you need in order for this to be successful? How much time do you have to put into this, right? Because the, the truth is it's not gonna be for everybody. And if that's really the case, you also want to get to the bottom of that as well. Um, so in looking at some team building tips, tricks, and ideas, and I know Jonna had family <clears throat> obligations with volleyball tournaments and all sorts of fun things there. Um, so I just wanted to share a few things that have stood out to me recently when it comes to tips, tricks, and ideas around team building. So the first one is... Um, Bob Heilig, who is like kind of the the it person right now as far as motivation and just kind of really spitting truth bombs <clears throat> for this industry, right? So one of the things that he said when he spoke at our leadership conference was to look for yourself when you're team building. And this one really resonated with me because 
um, I began to think about some of the people on our team and <clears throat> some of the different levels of success that people on the team are having. And it is not necessarily about the person, but I do think there's something to be said for this that I am going to probably build a better relationship or set a better example for those people that are a lot like myself. Um, they, If I am modeling the business by doing what I'm already doing, then I am likely going to help someone be successful who has a very similar um, lifestyle to mine. So I am a teacher. Maybe I'm also looking for someone who's a teacher. I'm a mom. I'm looking for someone who's a mom. Now, do they have to check every box of what I am? Absolutely not. Um, but a lot of times what we create for ourselves in terms of systems and then to go to help other people, it's going to be a naturally good fit for you as a leader if you look for someone who's a lot like yourself when you're team building because their abstentions were probably your abstentions. Their reasons for joining are probably similar to your reasons for joining. And then their roadblocks are probably similar to yours. So you're also then going to help them find solutions that have worked for you. Um, showing benefits and opportunities to your life that being a consultant has provided you. And this can happen in your VIP group. It can happen in stories. It can happen um, in conversation, person to person. And it does not even have to mention Norwex, right? But the opportunities in your life that you know have been brought to you by that. So if you go to a retreat with some teammates or you meet for dinner as a social outing, even if it's not to discuss that, show that, right? How did that benefit come into your life? And it will become kind of this natural progression in sharing like how that came to be and how that benefit has kind of struck your life. Um, <clears throat> discover your own fears of sharing. This has been a big one for me in terms of um, the stigma just surrounding kind of network marketing and direct selling. Um, I had a hard time kind of letting go of that myself and it became a huge roadblock for me in realizing that I was not forthcoming and talking about it and I had no solid reason why except my own personal judgments that I had brought with me um, based on, I don't know, years past or maybe a consultant that I just did not align with from a different company or um, maybe it was a bad experience I had in a, in a, a party-like situation. And so um, knowing that we have the power to kind of recreate that scenario for somebody else and to do it in a way that is going to be helpful for somebody to me is really empowering. Um, get comfortable with having conversations. This entire business works off of conversations and relationship building. And if you're not willing to talk to people, whether it's verbally or behind a computer or over a phone or whatever it might be, it's going to make it very difficult to be successful. Um, ask. This is like my motto, uh, something I grew up hearing from the time I was a child. It's like my dad's famous line, you don't ask, you don't get. Um, there is typically nothing that can happen that is negative by simply asking. And especially if you have built a relationship prior to the ask, the only thing that can happen is to get an honest answer or to lead to more conversation. Um, so even if it's not the answer you wanted, if you have a good relationship with that person, you're going to be happy with the response they're giving you because you already know the ins and outs and you know when to keep that conversation going and to ask more questions or when you've kind of reached that, that tipping point of honesty and they're either going to join you or they're not. Um, and by then, there won't be room for all those additional questions. Lean into your hosts. Um, your hosts are going to be some of your most recruited teammates. A lot of times, people who are hosting for a second or third time, even if you've asked before, you need to ask again. The average person is asked like five to seven times before they will say yes. 
Um, so even if you've asked once, that doesn't mean that you should stop asking. And you can do it without being or feeling pushy. So sometimes I say, ask five to seven times and people are like, geez, isn't once enough? No, um, had I not been asked five to seven times, I would not be here. Um, and it's all about kind of, again, keeping that conversation open and asking more questions. So building that relationship in the meantime, it's not being pushy. It's finding the root of their why, right? Why or why not? Um, what is that barrier? What is the abstention that they have? Um, Maybe you asked them when they were hosting, they have never had a party before, had no idea some of the benefits that could come, have a super successful party, you need to revisit and ask again and say, hey, you have all these friends and family members who are now using Norwex in their home, and I think that they're going to trust you more than they're going to trust me as a consultant because you led them to Norwex. And if you just had a $1,000 party, $1,200 party, whatever it might be, you have a solid base now of people that you can continue to educate and grow that web from. And what an amazing feeling to know that they have changed their lives and introduced them. And that's just now a tipping off point. So always revisit that, especially with your hosts. Um, and then where, when, and how do I sprinkle? So in host coaching alone, I ask three times. Um, I will ask at the very beginning, I do a lot of multi-host parties similar to Jana. Um, and I do a lot of it through messenger with group messaging. So I actually don't individually host coach, which I mentioned, but in group messaging. And I will um, always offer before the actual event night starts, I will offer again right before the demo. So like that, so a couple days before, then that afternoon, just because um, if they really want like the monetary benefit of that particular party, obviously it has to happen prior to doing the demo. And then I ask again after. We talk about the success of their party. $200 is a successful party. <laughs> and if they have bookings, um, things like that, I then use their successful party and their bookings to help them kickstart their business. And that is really a personal choice for you. It is your business to run how you want. Um, but if somebody had three bookings on their party, I'm going to give them at least two of them. Um, it is motivation for me to keep my own calendar going and to kick them off on a really successful start. So obviously that's, again, a choice that you have um, and you can help lead their, their initial party there. And then being okay with different paths. So serve your customers, help them find a path, path that best suits their needs. If someone says, not right now, they should be added to your potential teammate list and check back with them in a few months. Serve them as your customer, as you normally would. Continue that follow-up and that conversation will come back around. Um, there are going to be some people that will be very straight up and honest with you and it's not for them for whatever reason and that's okay too. Um, I have had people actually join not use the discount the way they thought they would, and then say, you know, like at this point, I do still want Norwex products. I just am not meeting those criteria, and I don't wanna feel the pressure of having to spend if I don't truly need something. I still wanna use Norwex, and I also just miss like being your customer, and I'm okay with paying full price, so I'm going to allow my dormancy to stay and go back to being your customer. And guess what? Like that conversation alone um, created more trust between us. Is it what I hoped happened? No. Did they give it a try and it wasn't for them? Yes. Am I okay with that? Absolutely. Um, and so being okay with different paths is also very important. Not everyone is going to run their business the exact same way you do. Some is going to be better and some it's going to be um, just more casual and sometimes it's going to be something that fizzles out and that's okay too. <clears throat> All right, um, as far as 
team building. Some of the things to be thinking about here, I don't know what's showing on there, um, <clears throat> are conversations. So asking questions, let them do the talking. Um, <clears throat> And perhaps next time, if Jonna and I are both on, we can kind of model that, what that looks like. But have a phone conversation. If you have someone that's interested in the business, I challenge you to stop the conversation where it's at before you word vomit on them. And trust me, I've done this a hundred times. All the things, right? If you sign up now, you can do this and this and this, and then you uh, get 15 days and $400 and blah, blah, blah. And it becomes so overwhelming that sometimes I think that shuts people off. Ask questions, but their first question should be, um, like, it sounds like you're interested in joining or opening up a consultant account. Would you be interested in having a quick phone chat this week for 10 or 15 minutes? There is so much you can accomplish in a phone chat rather than texting back and forth um, in 10 to 15 minutes, then spending an hour of your time throughout the week and just trying to like get back to each other. Finding the right fit for your customer and potential teammate. So look at February options here, right? We have option one, the Safe Haven 5 kit. It seems like that has been consistent so far in 2024. Option two, excuse me, two is the one we have seen some changes. So this is this month called an Essentials Collection Real Conversations Kit. Um, things that are essential that you'll love, like that multi-purpose cloth, the bamboo cloth, the window cloth, and the cleaning paste. <clears throat> and then, of course, the standard option. So one of the things is finding which option is going to fit your needs in terms of getting started, um, which option is going to fit your needs in terms of remaining active, um, not going dormant, using maximizing your discount. Um, are you going to share with friends and family? Are you going to party? Do you plan to party? How much money do you want to make? Um, how can I help you? All of those types of things. Um, if you haven't already, I think this is the third time I'm saying it, see, multiple repeats is helpful, start a maybe consultant list. So if you've started to have that conversation with anyone, anyone that it's come up with that you did not get a no should be on that list, even if you did not get a yes either, okay? Um, who do you add? You should add hosts, potential hosts, and people who are hosting for a second, third, fourth, however many time. You should add people who are your top contributors on your VIP page. You should add people who are your top spenders um, in the last six months or a year. You should add people who are joining buying clubs one, two, three, four times. Tell them how much money they have spent and how much they could be saving with a consultant account. We are here to serve our customers. <clears throat> and then a power statement. This is going to be part of your homework for this month. And that power statement is kind of like your elevator pitch. It is the way that you can approach the conversation in a short, clear, concise way without word vomiting. And then leave it with an open-ended question. So one of the things that... Um, we're hoping to have people do is if you already have one, feel free to share it um, in the chat. If you don't already have one, write one down, share it in the comments, come back and share it, um, or message it to John or I. And we want to hear your elevator pitch. We're both working on our own. I know that for me, I have one and I'm revamping it because it doesn't have enough sprinkles of all the things that it should in terms of um, parties, okay, or events or whatever you want to call them, and the opportunity for Norwex. Mine is more about what Norwex is, and it also didn't always end with a question. Um, so I want people to know that there are like, three essential ways to be involved with Norwex, and that is to be 
like a customer and educator <clears throat> and just like someone who is using it in their home and making transformation in their home. Um, it is to be a host and partner with me or to be a consultant and do what I do. And that's the educator part. I kind of mix those in. Um, so I'm kind of reworking mine to include those three paths. So I will share it. And then, of course, we have this month's joining options. Um, <clears throat> so heading into our week four here, and then week five is a recap. Um, first and foremost, write that power statement. Okay, so come back, share that with us, or bring it with you um, in our next Level Up meeting. Other things that you should do, and why do these relate to team building? Putting together sample packs, business cards, whatever you need in your purse, your car, carry on, be ready to share, and have those with as something to pull out when you're delivering your power statement. So how does this relate? If you have those in your presence, you are far more likely to confidently bring up Norwex as a product, a business, as a um, event that somebody can have and as a transformational tool for their life and their home. If you are talking about it and you don't have something to give them, a business card is a great way to like open that communication. Mine has a QR code on it, which is going to my link tree. Um, and because the link tree link never changes, I can just continue to update that with all the things. So my Facebook VIP group, you know, all the different things that go along with that. Um, post about the opportunity once in the next week in your stories. We also had that last time. Let us know if you come up with any creative ways to do that. Look at your party flow and your posts. Do you have recruiting seeds in your party posts? If you do, add one or two more. Um, more than likely, it is a one joining the opportunity post or ask me about my job post. Think of another way that you could do that. And again, highlight the benefits it has had for you. What's a problem you can solve for other people? If you have a recorded demo, um, go back and watch it and See if you can pick out recruiting seeds from it. And do you have three to five? Play Ask Me About My Job in your VIP group or any event. So if you don't already do that, it gives you an opportunity to brag on your job. Okay. Um, talk about those benefits. Update your maybe consultant list. If you don't have one yet, create your maybe consultant list and add at least three people to it. And then, of course, going live in your VIP group, share the February joining opportunities if you have not already. Okay? Um, and that brings us to the end of week three for team building. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to um, myself or to Jana. Um, and we are going to chat. I think we might be bumping or keeping, I should say keeping, week four is next Sunday to get us back on track um, so that we still finish the program in the 10 weeks. As a reminder, if anyone promotes before March 31st, we have special incentives. You will get something from each of us in that case. Um, and go have some conversations, ask some questions, get curious, and good luck.